The congregation of Emmanuel Ministry Church welcomes you to I Am Alive with Pastor Philip Trent, minister of the gospel for more than 25 years. Now get your Bible and a notebook and let's join Pastor Trent as he preaches the uncompromised Word of God. Greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and welcome to I Am Alive. My name is Philip Trent, I pastor Emmanuel Ministry Church over in Hart County, Kentucky. We're located seven miles east of Horse Cave in a community called Lee Grand. We're right around the curve past the Lee Grand Elementary School there in Hart County. Our schedule of services starts at uh, 9.30 on Sunday morning with Sunday school. We have tremendously good teachers. Our adult teacher, Brad Bird, works there at, um, in Glasgow at a factory. And that's a, a great guy. He uh, took a lot of correspondence classes from Rama and where I went to Bible school and tremendously good teacher, very, very great in-depth teacher. He's teaching on the gifts of the Spirit, and we just had a great time the last many, many weeks uh, studying on the gifts of the Spirit, how that the God Spirit moved all through the Old Testament as well as the New. And then when we got to the New Testament, uh, God added two uh, gifts to that, and that's tongues and interpretation. All the other seven gifts of the Spirit were working throughout the Old Covenant. Uh, and through Jesus' life, He all those gifts worked in His life, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. But uh, dispensation of Pentecost, when Pentecost was fully come, the dispensation changed and uh, added to the seven gifts was the uh, tongues and interpretation. And that's for us today. That's for God's children today to just a booster and added wonderful blessing to the body of Christ today to be filled with the Holy Spirit and speak in other tongues as the Spirit gives utterance and even to pray when you don't know how to pray. I mean, there's times that uh, you run into a, a place that you don't even know I mean, how do, how do I even pray about this? Well, thank God for the Holy Ghost. He knows how to pray a perfect prayer, and we just lean on the Holy Spirit. You know what I mean? Lean on Him. It's like a crutch. You lean on that crutch to help holding you up, and that's what He is. And I'm thankful for the for the power to pray in the Spirit and to pray out what God has. I've had it to happen numbers of times. I couldn't number on my hands and toes the numbers of times that I've hadn't known what to pray, hadn't known how to pray about this situation. I had no clear uh, place in the Word to go get that spot to pull on and the Spirit of God bring it to me. I'm telling you what a wonderful blessing it is. And I, I'm thankful. And, you know, no man knows the day nor the hour of Jesus is coming, but the Bible says we'll know the season. Isn't it good to know the season of the Lord's coming? I know I think we ought to stay ready for Him any time, even the fact that we, you know, death is uncertain about the time and of our death. But we can know where we're going when we die, and I thank God that I know where I'm going because Jesus Christ purchased me. I'm a child of God, and I'm going to be in God's heaven one of these days. And we know not the hour or the time of our departure. We may all go in a, in a group here some of these days. An old song tells us about that. It said, Jesus is coming soon. Could be morning, night, or noon. Amen. And I uh, used to sing this song with a quartet back years ago. I hadn't sang it for years, uh, but I'm going to try to sing it today. I've y'all been asking me to sing, so uh, here we go. <clears throat> Troublesome times are here, filling man's hearts with fear. Freedoms we all hold dear, now is at stake. Humbling your heart to God, safe from the chastening rod. Seek the way pilgrims trod, Christians awake. Jesus is coming soon, morning or night or noon. Many will meet their doom. Trumpets will sound, all of the dead shall rise. Righteous meet in the sky, going where no one dies, heavenward bound. Great song, isn't it? Go where no one dies. Once you once you get to heaven, you're not going to see death again. That you won't never have to worry about a sickness or disease. <laughs> I don't know about you. That makes me want to shout. When I get to God's heaven, all the old things will pass away. This old flesh, the veil of flesh, won't never have sickness or disease. Never be tested or tried in the way it's tested here. Jesus said, "In this world, you got tests, trials, and temptations, but." 
don't be afraid to be a good cheer because I've overcome. And then I believe the Bible plainly tells us when we get to heaven, thank God the devil that causes the problem, it would be eliminated. He won't have any pull at all on us. But now there's a time here on the earth that in a sense, because of what Adam allowed the devil to do, brought the curse upon the human race. His lease will run out, so to speak. His time's coming to an end. And boy, when it does, it's going to be different. Amen. <clears throat> Troubles will soon be o'er, happy forevermore, when we meet on that shore, free from all care. Rising up in the sky, telling the world goodbye, homeward we then will fly, glory to share. Jesus is coming soon, morning or night or noon, many will meet their doom, trumpets will sound. Sound. All of the dead shall rise, righteous meet in the sky, going where no one ever will die, heavenward bound. Amen. Jesus is coming. Many will meet their doom. What, what does that mean? What does that mean, Brother Philip? Well, if you're not ready, if you're not in the position you should be when Jesus comes, either when he comes for you in death, or when he comes for the church and takes us away. If you're not ready, it's going to be doomed for you. God don't want you to be doomed. God don't want you to be damned. God don't want anybody lost. For God's not willing or desirous that any should perish, but that all should come to salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is coming soon. I'm 71 years old. He's coming for me some of these days. I know not the day nor the hour. Whether we'll go through, you know, I really have always believed that I would be in the catching away. And, you know, in one way or the other, if Jesus comes after me, I'll be caught away. I understand that. But I'm talking about the mass exodus that will come. Perhaps that'll be in my lifetime. If it is, you know, it's going to be the next, you know, <laughs> I'm 71. So do the math. Amen. But uh, nonetheless, uh, it's not because I'm alive that he's coming. It's because of his word. He says, when you see the nation of Israel arise, when you see them come, uh, that, that olive branch, when you see them broom, bloom, or come out, that generation will see the coming of the Son of Man. I was, I was born not uh, around the time that Israel became a nation. Uh, it wasn't the exact time, but within, within my, a few years of my birth, Israel became a nation. So it seems like I would be a generation if I live a normal life, well, possibly 80 years. I mean, that's, a, that's, a, uh, that's probably a generation, uh, maybe, maybe more than a generation, but nonetheless, I'm alive. So that's why I say possibly my lifetime we'll see Jesus coming in. Uh, you know, I've got the perfect storm. 2027 is my perfect year for Jesus to come. You say, oh, you're naming today. No, I'm not. There's 365 days in 2027. I don't know which day he'll come. I believe it'll be along the fall of the year, to be honest with you. I was born in October, October the 11th. I ain't saying he'll come on my birthday, but I believe that's about the time in my mind's eye, the fall festivals, you know, God taught us through the feast and the festivals. Jesus kept the early feast to the nth degree. He came just exactly the time that those festivals were celebrated. Jesus himself came in those festival times in the day of, of Passover when all the people were gathered in Jerusalem to do what God had told them to do. There when he was all there, I mean, it was crowded. I mean, the streets were full. And Jesus, the very Lamb of God, had been inspected by Pilate. He inspected him himself. And he came to the people. He said, you know, I, I don't find a fault in this man. I, I don't see nothing wrong with Jesus. I don't know what you, what's the deal here? And they said, he asked him, he said, what would you have me to do? And uh, they said, crucify him. Well, it was during that time, it was known that one was released, you know, just like the president has uh, pardon ability to pardon uh, so many people. The governor did the same thing. Well, you know, they said, who would you, who would you want me to release? And you know, why would you kill this man? They said, well, give us Barabbas. This crucified Jesus. Isn't that a mess? Is that odd? Is that, is that just happen? No, that's fulfilled of so many scriptures that point to that. And yet we, we have dull of hearing or dull of seeing. No, they were there to celebrate Passover. Well, 
Passover was truly ce celebrated in that the real lamb was slain. Did you know from that time on they quit them sacrifices? Does that tell you anything? <laughs> Jesus took care of that. Jesus brought those sacrifices to an end. But I want you to know there's an antichrist spirit that's going to rise back up. And there's a, there's a demonic influence of religion that's going to rise back up. And they'll go to re-killing and re-shedding those blood again. Those sacrifices will come back again. And, and, and it's just terrible that it will because that just tells us that they deny Jesus as being the sacrifice. They deny Jesus as being the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. The Bible says if you willingly begin to go back and do those things after having knowledge of Jesus being the Lamb of God, there's no more sacrifice for sin. In other words, if, if they go back, if they re deny Jesus, if they, maybe some of them are on the edge and say, well, I believe Jesus is the Christ. Yeah, I accept him. But yet their religion goes back to those animal sacrifices. There's no hope for them if they go back to do that. No, we don't know to deny Jesus. Jesus was the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world, but made manifest during his time on earth. And he was killed, he was crucified, brutally murdered and crucified for the sins, man's, for the sins of, our, of mankind. And all of our sin was placed upon him. And the Bible tells us he's coming back one of these days. He's coming back. Jesus will come again. Might, might be this morning, might be this evening. I, I don't know. I, my magic day is 2027, fall of the year, and uh, we'll see. <laughs> I'm not telling you what day, though. That's just the season I believe you'll come. And you say, well, eat, drink, and be married to then. No, let's live for Jesus. Let's tell everybody about Jesus. Why? Because Jesus is coming soon. Amen. Aren't you glad many years ago that you were touched by the Lord? Thank God that somebody touched me. Many years I walked in darkness, and Many years I, I did things that wasn't right, but praise God, he touched me, and now I, I am forever his son. Uh, maybe this is not the song. Mm, this is not the same song I thought it was. There's, there's a song about he touched me, amen. He touched me, oh yes, he touched me, and oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something happened, and now I know Jesus touched me, and he made me whole. I was shackled by them heavy burdens neath a load of guilt and shame. But then the hand of Jesus touched me, and now I am no longer the same. Oh, he touched me. Yes, Jesus touched me. And oh, the joy that floods my soul. For something wonderful happened, and now I know he touched me, and he made me whole. Amen. I'm glad that he touched me, and I'm glad I know that I'll live on. This old song says, I'll live on. Through eternity, I'll live on. Amen. Hallelujah. Tis a sweet and glorious thought that comes to me. I'll live on, yes, I'll live on. Jesus saved my soul from death and now I'm free. I'll live on, yes, I'll live on. Oh, I'll live on, yes, I'll live on. Through eternity, I'll live on. Yes, I'll live on, oh, I'll live on. To eternity, I'll live on. One verse says, when my body slumbers in the cold, cold clay, I'll live on. There to be with Jesus to the judgment day, I'll live on. Isn't that wonderful to know that? Though death may have gripped you and you may have lost a loved one recently, they're not in that grave, they're not in that cold, cold grave. No, they've gone to be with Jesus, for with spirit we have a soul and live in the physical body. 
I'm grateful that God has given us that truth and that understanding. Though our physical body will decay and go back to the dust from which it come. I know that may be sad to think about that, but just think about this. He's, your loved one's not there. He or she's done gone on to be with the Lord. They're feeling no pain. They're feeling no difficulties. If they know the Lord Jesus Christ, if they've been born of the Spirit of God, then they're free from that. They're loose from the body, and they, more than likely they had some challenges in their physical body. They had some difficulties, may have had to bad sickness or disease, and a lot of pain comes along with that. I don't know. I don't have to, I don't think. I think man can die and go to be with the Lord without pain. I believe that. I believe we can just, I believe we can just leave one day. That's what I'm hoping to do. It's just one of these days to say, well, it's my time's up. Uh, see y'all. Uh, love you. I'll see you whenever you get to heaven, <laughs> you know. But I, I, I mean, most people die from some sickness. I do understand that. But I don't think you have to. I really don't. But praise God, if they are, once you put them in that grave, that wasn't them. They done gone to be with the Lord. To be absent from the bodies, to be present with the Lord, the Bible teaches us. And I'm thankful for it being that way. Amen. God is a good God. And I'm just searching for some songs. I've had people to really... Uh, really pull on me and talk to me about singing. So I decided this week I'm just going to do some singing. If uh, if a song comes to me, I usually just preaching along. And if a song comes, I just sing it. So if you have a request, you want me to sing, you can send it to me. I'll try my best to do that. Uh, but I want to spend the most of my time preaching the truth and the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. We sang a song at at our loved one's uh, funeral. Uh, for the last many years, we've sang this same song, uh, cousins, brothers, uncles, aunts, whoever, uh, that glad reunion day. <clears throat> there will be a happy meeting in heaven, I know, when we see our many loved ones we've known here below, gathered on the blessed hilltops with hearts all aglow. That will be a glad reunion day. Oh, a glad day, a wonderful day. Glad day, a glorious day. There with all the holy angels and loved ones to stay. That will be a glad reunion day. When we live a million years in that wonderful place, basking in the love of Jesus, beholding his face, it will seem but just a moment of praising his grace. That will be a glad reunion day. You got loved ones that's waiting on you over there. You got friends and neighbors and people that you know that live for the Lord, that will love Jesus and was saved. You know, there's going to be a glad reunion day one of these days when we, when we pass over. I, I really don't know exactly how it's going to be. I, I, I just, you know, many people have their ideas and their dreams of what's going to happen. I don't know. I just know uh, I believe it will be a glad reunion day somehow. I believe uh, our loved ones that's gone on somehow or another, I believe we're going to have some understanding of, of who they are. And it's all because of Jesus. Amen. Because Jesus loved us, because Jesus died for us, he wants you to receive uh, the, the, the eternal life today. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, if you're bound in your sins, God wants you to be saved. He wants you to receive Jesus as your personal Savior. God don't want you to go to a devil's hell. He don't, have, he don't want anybody, anybody born into this world to go to hell. God does not want that. So we put all the sin that man had upon Jesus so that everybody believes in Jesus, trusts in Jesus, relies on Jesus, can be saved. Amen. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Listen to this now. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. Why do we do that? All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. This may fit you today. I don't know what you're going through. Have we trials and temptations? 
Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Why not? Because the Lord said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. The Lord said, I will guide you into all things and areas of life. Didn't they have trials and temptations? Praise God, you can lean on Jesus, knowing that Jesus is there with you. The presence of God brings such power to us. I thank God for his holy presence and his Holy Spirit. We should never be discouraged. But what we're going to do, take it to the Lord in prayer. <clears throat> Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrow share? Jesus won't condemn you. Jesus won't put you down for having difficulties. No, he'll come right there with you. If you're, you're by yourself tonight, you're really not by yourself if you know the Lord Jesus. If you are by yourself, won't you call out to God? Say, come, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come be near me. Come and comfort me today. If you need comfort from God, believe God will comfort you today. If you'll ask him, seek and knock, God wants to help you. Who will all our sorrow share? Why, Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden, cumbered by a load of care? Jesus knows how to help you if that's where you're at. Precious Savior, still our refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Do thy friends despise, forsake thee? I sense someone is having family problems. You know, the Lord knows how to fix that. Everybody forsake Jesus. Everybody forsook him. All his disciples forsook him. Peter, one of his closest ones, cursed and said, I don't know the man. But they all denied him. We all likewise have denied Jesus. But thank God we found out the truth. We call upon his name and do your friends despise you and forsake you? Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms, he'll take and shield you. You will find a solace there. I want to tell you, Jesus is the answer for every situation. Makes no difference the problems you're having. Jesus will help you through every situation, through every problem, through every difficulty. He will never leave you. You might have messed up. You might, have, you might have done something you shouldn't have done, but praise God, you can ask Jesus to forgive you. I mean, if we have sinned in our lives, then we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. John chapter, uh, uh, 1 John chapter 2, verse 1, Jesus is our advocate, and he, is, he will be there to help us if we'll turn to him and ask him to help us and forgive us. Praise God, he'll do just that. There is coming a day when no heartache shall come, no more cloud than the sky, no more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore. What a day! A glorious day that will be. There'll be no sorrow there. No more burdens to bear. No more sickness nor pain. Amen. Oh, glory. No more parting over there. And forever I will be with the one who died for me. <laughs> That's Jesus. What a day, a glorious day that will be. Won't you sing it with me? What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. When I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand, and leads me through the promised land. <laughs> what a day. What a glorious day that will be. Dear friend, do you know Jesus today? Do you know that you know Jesus? 
I'm not just talking about I've heard him, but you personal, have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. If you do, when death comes your way, you won't have to worry about that. When the rapture comes, you'll be shouting, praise God. We're going to go up with a shout, the Bible says. For today, that will be when my Jesus I shall see. One more verse. What a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. I have light in my soul for which long I had sought since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart. Floods of joy o'er my soul, like the sea billows roll, since Jesus came into my heart. There's a light in the valley of death now for me, since Jesus came into my heart. And the gates of that city beyond I can see, since Jesus came into my heart. Has he come into your heart? <laughs> I've seen till my eyes are watered over and I can't read the verses. But I just love the Lord tonight and I thank God for you and thank God for allowing me to be here on uh, this TV station. I, I pray that these uh, meetings have been all right with you. Uh, you've asked me to sing and so now I've been singing. So maybe you want me to preach now <laughs> instead of saying, but I want you to know I love the Lord with all my heart and soul. I believe with all my heart there's only one way to get to God, and that's through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. What I believe about that, well, I believe you must believe on the Lord Jesus. You must believe that Jesus is the Son of God. You must believe that Jesus died, but God raised him from the dead, and to through faith in the name of Jesus Christ, repentance of your sin, faith in Jesus Christ, and ask Jesus to come into your heart. Confess him as Lord, and you shall be saved. The Bible says, for all that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. God bless you. Thank you for watching. We'll be here next week. We are